Hello everyone, this is JID Inspiration Masters. As a part of our inspiring series, we get the opportunity to meet the difference makers, the entrepreneurs, the business owners, and the people who are making a difference, not just in the Dallas Fort Worth area, but around the world. And today is no different. I have a very special guest here. I have uh, Mr. Ravi here. Okay, uh, Ravi Kandam Sethi, he is here with us today, and I am going to be talking to him and some of the things which we are talking about is very interesting. Let me tell you something about Ravi. He holds his uh, bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering from uh, Sri Krishna Dev Raya University. And one of the most important thing and task he has taken is being the founder and CEO of Save the Child Foundation. It's a 501c3 organization founded in 2008. Uh, this organization supports children's right and causes of special needs children, street children, underprivileged children, girl children, primarily in India and Africa, and responsible for raising over a million dollars and impacting the lives of more than 100,000 children. So I'm not gonna go into detail about Save the Child Foundation, but I'm gonna hear straight from, straight from Ravi. That would be the best thing to do. So Ravi, uh, this is a foundation which is making a difference. 100,000, when I see that number, that's a big number. So tell us something about the story behind it. Like, how did you start it? What was the trigger? And what was that specific moment Then you said, I need to do something about it? Um, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Jay and uh, Deepthi, for having me here. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to share some of our journeys and uh, uh, it's been really great knowing both of you, and uh, and thank I you. thank you for this opportunity. Um, so just to give the you know where this journey started is uh, I think for most of us, like most of everybody in US, uh, the first time we actually all took a flight from India, mm -hmm. and we got on board with this flight, and uh, I think we all left uh, uh, India mm -hmm. with the thought process that you know at some point of time we want to go back and uh, you know give it back, give something back to India. Yes. Uh, you know, not just to our country, but maybe our village and our mm -hmm. community and you know, family and etc. Right? And then uh, once we stepped in, in in US, and then the first ten years just passed by like that because yes. of H ones and green cards and you know marriage and kids and etc. Right? Yeah. And while this was happening uh, uh, in 2004, uh, I actually had uh, a daughter, mm -hmm. and her name is Saryu. And uh, on that day, I kind of really realized. Mm -hmm that uh, how important uh, children are uh, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of grew this uh, newfound respect uh, uh, for my dad and mom, like, mm -hmm. you know, of how they kind of brought me up and my brother and like, you know, the pains mm -hmm. that they actually took. Yeah. And even more, uh, I was also thinking about uh, my wife Sashi's uh, parents, mm -hmm. of what it took for them to raise a girl child and like, mm -hmm. you know, give her in marriage and etc. right? So these things were happening in, uh, in 2008, I happened to visit India and uh, um, one of my friends suggested that I visit uh, one of these orphanages, it's mm -hmm. called Asha Jyoti. Uh -huh. And uh, so during that visit specifically, um, I met a lot of children who have been abandoned and they've been all found in railway stations mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for, for the only one single reason that uh, they all had some kind of a special need. Oh. And uh, so cerebral palsy children and mm -hmm. like, you know, there were 100 children in this orphanage and then one day I saw and uh, there was only one wheelchair and uh, more than 50% wow. of the kids could not move. And uh, even that one wheelchair actually didn't have one wheel. Oh. And uh, so, so it kind of hit me really hard, right? Later on that same day, I, I met another baby and mm -hmm. uh, I actually kind of read a story about her mm -hmm. and uh, this baby's name is uh, Sadna. This was mm -hmm. 10 years back, right? Uh -huh. So after she was born, like uh, after a few days, uh, so this girl was actually wrapped in a newspaper mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she was abandoned uh, in, a, in a cemetery, in a trash can, underneath a pile of newspaper uh, in a cemetery, uh -huh. right? And uh, again, the reason was uh, uh, obviously because it's a girl child and uh, it could be a reason for an early child, uh, early girl wow. pregnancy or stuff. And so on that day when I met Madhvi, he kind of, kind of walked me through some of these really painful stories mm -hmm. trying to understand like, you know, what's going on with these children. I kind of suggested uh, Madhvi that like, you know, because I'm here today, I mm -hmm. can do one thing or I can do two things. 
The first thing is I would actually just give you, I can, you know, go home and I can give you whatever I have cash. Uh -huh. And I can go home and send some more money out. And then uh, I'll just say it in my heart that uh, I've done what I need to do. Yes. And uh, I'll just go back, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can do the second thing, which mm -hmm. is uh, I'm not going to give you anything today. I'll just give you hope. Yes. And then I'll do something about it because mm -hmm. uh, this is not a problem that can be solved by just making oh. a one-time donation, right? Yeah. Truth of the matter is, uh, this organization was called Asha Jyoti in India, mm -hmm. which was started because uh, Madhavi's uh, sister-in-law, like, you know, she died and her name was Jyoti and they kind of wanted to extend this message mm -hmm. and they started with two kids to begin with and uh, they started back in 97 and I went there in 2008. By that time, we already had 100 kids, right? Wow. So we wanted to continue that and that's the reason I came here in 2008 and we started Asha Jyoti USA. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to be called Asha Jyoti USA. We recently changed and we also DBA as uh, Save the Child Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just to give a wrap on that, uh, the reason we were, why we call ourselves Save the Child Foundation is mm -hmm. um, uh, especially around special needs children in India. Yes. Uh, most of the parents, especially the the, uh, the one which are below poverty, mm -hmm. uh, these parents are willing and they're hoping or they're praying that their kids die. Oh. Uh, because uh, because of cerebral palsy and uh, special needs children, they don't have clarity on what to do. Uh -huh. They're not enough support uh, from government or like hospitals. So there's not enough education how to take care of these children. So they would rather have these kids die and uh, oh. they're very systematically neglecting these children. Uh, as such, uh, most of these kids will not live longer mm -hmm. and, uh, and they've been abandoned for the same exact reason and that's when we found these hundred of these kids oh. in vegetable markets and churches and railway stations and all that stuff, right? So our intent is actually to literally save these children and that's exactly why we call ourselves Save the Child Foundation. Save the child, right? yeah. And uh, so as part of the special needs agenda, we have about uh, 100 children which get impacted on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis. Uh, but overall landscape-wise, uh, we have more than 500 special needs children who are immobile, who can't talk, uh -huh. and uh, they're just lying there, you know. Uh, they, all they need is a little bit of uh, uh, like a wheelchair and maybe mm -hmm. some therapy mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of love and care, mm -hmm. and uh, we can guarantee you that they will live longer. And yeah. uh, that's what we've been trying to do uh, uh, in our landscape right now yeah. for Asha Jyoti. Uh, there's another organization where we have Care and Love in Vizag. We have 22 children there. Uh -huh. uh, we have one more organization which is supporting in uh, in Hyderabad as well, at least uh -huh. from a specialist uh, landscape perspective. So, so it's that's all, the journey how we started. All, wow, it, it's interesting to know, but it's at the same time uh, quite sad to know that uh, the kids, I mean, the parents have to abandon the kids because they don't have resources to take True. care of them. And that is that is something which is very noble that you took over that cause because that's that's something which is not which was not attended right before. Yeah, and i think special needs is uh, uh i think the whole uh, so special needs agenda has been completely abandoned not mm -hmm. just by people uh, even the governments do not have a clarity on like you know what to do with this and we did some unofficial research it sounds like you know on an average there are about 20 children mm -hmm. uh, per every single village and if you try that multiply that by mandals and states and that would be like 500,000 plus children just mm -hmm. in Andhra alone yeah you can do the math for India yeah and uh, I mean like I just recently read an article that there are 13 million autistic kids in India right now uh -huh. and that incidence is growing so fast yeah. and uh, people don't have a clue what to do with special needs children and it's it's not actually about uh, a welfare issue with special needs it isn't it's actually yeah. a rights issue uh -huh. and uh, I think People have to kind of start uh, attributing that to a rights issue and then like mm -hmm. really fight and advocate for all specialist kids. So. Yeah, that is true because it's it's just uh, something has to be done. Yep. That's the that's the real key. Right. And uh, s what is the real outcome you're looking for and what's your vision going forward? Like what kind of outcome you're looking for? So, um, from a special needs agenda, obviously, we have put programs where, mm -hmm. like, you know, we obviously are trying to rehabilitate children. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, ventured into stem cell transplantations and, like, you know, physiotherapy and all that other mm -hmm. stuff, right? We don't necessarily plan to grow this landscape because uh, taking care of 500 children itself is a humongous deal yes. for us, right? Uh -huh. But usually in that part of the journey, uh, very early on, we kind of realized that these children, uh, if we invest all the money only on mm -hmm. special needs kids, mm -hmm. Because we are doing this because we are all educated and we are yeah. going to do something for education. Yes. And that's exactly how we kind of uh, then partnered with our uh, organizations called Astro Trust. And uh -huh. uh, they actually are based out of uh, 
uh, Dehradun uh -huh. and uh, with an able leadership of like Shaila and uh -huh. uh, uh, Shaila Brishnad and uh, like uh, Nilu Khanna. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, this program started off like uh, where they actually do this mm -hmm. and we kind of fund some of the projects and the typical aspects that we look at here is uh, one is an anti-begging campaign where uh -huh. we actually kind of uh, systematically tackle and put programs in place mm -hmm. Uh, where the mobile outreach teams and like you know this is to stop uh, begging uh, uh -huh. you know because this is the kids end up on the streets for the reason because the dad and mom are daily wage laborers and that's how they end up begging on the streets and they're mm -hmm. exposed to trafficking and etc yeah and uh, so the programs that we do is uh, for anti-begging campaign and then we put them through like a, a very tedious uh, outreach process uh -huh. uh, program under like streets one uh -huh. before when they're ready and then actually wow. can be mainstream into schools right Mm -hmm. So there are more than 2,000 children uh, that Astra Trust supports on a single everyday basis. Uh -huh. We have adopted 40 of those children from streets and slums who uh -huh. were otherwise actually on the streets rack picking for 12 hours a day for two oh, wow. rotis. And uh, uh, so there's a lot of transformation going on there. Mm, yeah. So uh, so that's the education agenda that uh, we're actually uh, right now doing wow. and trying to scale a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Uh, continuing the same thought, uh, mm -hmm. so we then started another program for with another partners called Seruts, and these guys mm -hmm. are based out of Kannur. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting fact, uh, uh, trivia there is that I went to the same town for my schooling, and little did I realize that uh, from an engineering, that's where I did, yeah. and uh, little did I realize that in Andhra, uh, Kannur happens to be one of the top districts where um, uh, the girl child territories is uh, on the peak. Mm -hmm. So we figured, okay, if I have friends from this college in the same town, I probably do something here in Kannur, right? Yes, that's good. So yeah. that's how we kind of started partnering with them. So we do have like another 200 children there we mm -hmm. kind of support on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but in between all this, what happened in uh, in December uh, 16th on 2012 was uh, uh, the Nirbhaya incident happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't sleep for the next two days and I figured... They, some way we need to kind of channel mm -hmm. the angst and uh, the energy, mm -hmm. especially from folks in uh, in the U.S. and like uh -huh. and elsewhere out of India, to see what we can necessarily do something about the girl child and take it back to India and use that uh, right. or you know all the energy that we can, mm -hmm. not just funding right, but uh, energy and like strategy yeah, and approach. It needs a lot of lot, lot more, more things. Lot more yeah, just things. money won't do it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right, right. So that's how Pari started yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, back in 2012, and Pari is our girl child agenda. Uh -huh. Just the way I would treat my girl child as yes. uh, like a Pari. Uh -huh. uh, I think we thought that that sensitivity is lost in the in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, people might just forget Nirbhaya because it's more than six or seven years now. Yeah. But uh, things haven't really changed. Yeah. There's still of such rape incidents going yeah. on on a day to day basis. Um, but yeah, that's exactly how our girl child agenda started. So right. So you have so many of them. You have a uh, special needs, you have education, empowerment, you have buddy, and you are coming up with buddy water, buddy toilets, you have a lot of programs coming up. That is correct, that is correct. Yeah. And also you are supporting the disaster relief, uh, Hurricane Harvey, Nepal earthquake, the Kerala flooding, right. and the cyclone in Vizak. Correct. So those are... Uh, so I, I think like, you know, uh, uh, just the way a kid can get sick uh -huh. at home and... Uh, uh -huh. This could be an unplanned sickness, right? <laughs> or un some unplanned event does yeah. happen, and obviously, uh, and we have a lot of our teams uh, in India who are pretty, mm -hmm. like you know, uh, ready to kind of rock and roll and you know get in the action and make things happen. Mm -hmm. So we do support, and we have done that for Nepal. And like, you know, I think one critical advantage of being a smaller nonprofit is mm -hmm. to be able to kind of put a team there on the field uh, within like a couple of days. That is right. Yeah. Unlike uh, most of the bigger organizations, which yeah. have much more a lot of regulations and all this stuff, yes. right? So impact when exactly it is needed. Yeah. And uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, with a certain agility, I think yes. that's what like some of the smaller non yeah, really excel. It's easy to make a decision at the top, and at the same time to get the volunteers put together and uh, correct, really correct. really make a difference. Ma you know, mobilization wow. is easy, and uh, these days a lot of people think that like you know there's going to be a GoFundMe campaign uh -huh. or a Facebook campaign. I can just make a donation and I'm uh -huh. done. Uh, it's not that easy. Some yes. of the social channels doesn't really allow for. The funds to be distributed uh, for various reasons. Uh -huh. So, and I normally advocate for this is like you know try to give money to the same organization that you trust in, mm -hmm. and you know make things happen, yes. um, and then limit your sources that way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Jay, I know you brought up like you know some of these other aspects about body uh -huh. pads, and I think I just need to. Yeah, the body uh, pads. We definitely want to know more about it because that is something which is you had linked it to education. Correct. And. In the talks, you told me that 
if you're not covering that piece, you're not covering the education piece entirely. Right. Tell us. I'm, I'm, I'm so it. glad. I'm so yeah. glad, Che, you mentioned that. So normally what uh, we have a sanitation first and education next agenda. Mm-hmm. And uh, even prior to that, uh, protection is one thing critical. So parties about uh, has four pillars, mm-hmm. uh, protection, education, uh, sanitation, and empowerment. Mm-hmm. And uh, we take sanitation uh, with, a, with, a, with a very critical focus. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, the reason is obviously uh, the girls because of the lack of pads mm-hmm. and uh, more importantly, lack of awareness mm-hmm. and uh, uh, are kind of getting into situations where they're falling behind, uh-huh. right? So party actually operates on a, on a tagline of leave no girl child behind. Uh-huh. And this is to actually enable and empower uh, like girls by you know not just giving them pads, um, but like raising awareness for mm-hmm. that and then uh, and then providing access to pants and teaching them adoption metrics of like how they can right. and then obviously making them advocate so they can take the message forward, right? Yes. So uh, so back in two years ago, we kind of talked about it and then that's exactly how the party pad thing came together. Mm-hmm. So we were inspired by Arunachala Muruganathan, the pad man uh, okay. model uh-huh. and we kind of replicated the same model. And uh, that model allows us to manufacture about 10,000 pads uh, uh, per month. Uh-huh. And uh, pretty soon, once people caught the word that we're giving free pads, uh, we now actually have requests for more than 100,000 pads a month. A month, wow. Right? So now, we went back to your home state, Gujarat, mm-hmm. and uh, we have now consulted with a wholesaler. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, we collect the funds here in the US, we uh-huh. kind of package them as putty pads. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then obviously, putty pads goes with also with the tagline saying, add an exclamation to your period, uh-huh. right? So kind of give them the wow factor and like, yes. you know, give them the confidence of like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, knowing that, that there is a pad that actually will enable and becomes yes. a vehicle for their success. Uh-huh. Um, so I kind of went with the roadmap and I said, like, and we're going to give two million pads uh, from a from a non-profit angle completely, and nobody has done this anywhere in India or anywhere in the world right now. Mm-hmm. So we said we're going to give two million pads to girls in India, uh-huh. and um, and then we also figured out that like you know, if you have two hundred million people who need it, and then you're just giving two million pads, how do you really decide where it is going? Right. right? So we did a strategic assessment of like, you know, we figured that PAD uh-huh. is just an enabler or it's yes. a vehicle. Uh-huh. It's actually the party that we need to focus on the woman itself. Yes. So what we have done in the last six to eight months, the 100,000 impact is actually more sanitation impact. Uh-huh. And uh, what that necessarily means is that we have given this PADs to girls in schools. Uh-huh. And uh, not just schools, but like orphanage homes, government homes, prisons. Uh-huh hospitals mm-hmm. and uh, farmers, uh-huh. uh, even nuns in, in monasteries and yeah. etc. and all this stuff, right? So so that's the party thing, uh, the party pad, like uh-huh. how we take it to the market. But then again, at the same part of time, we very quickly realized that like, you know, if you're giving a disposable pad, uh-huh. you're just adding so much pressure more on earth. Yes. And we didn't want to do that. Yeah. So for that, what we have done is, if you give it to a school or a home, we kind of tag that with the incinerator. Mm-hmm. We kind of educate the girls to use bathrooms. Again, we're still going through cycles where uh-huh. some of these girls don't even have bathrooms mm-hmm. where they can change the pads. Uh-huh. They don't have water in the toilets. And even some of the populations that we have actually hit, the girls don't have underwear either. Mm-hmm. Right. So we had to kind of couple underwear with the pads when uh-huh. we give it to them. Uh, so it is not what it looks like in India, yeah. but it is extremely like you know pathetic in some places because yeah. of lack of awareness. Yes. And as a matter of fact, at this point of time, we met one of our dear friends, and like you know, she became a close family member now with us. And her name is Soumya Dabdiva. Uh-huh. Uh She started something called Bala Pants, and which is a cloth-based uh, reusable pad for like up to eighteen months. Uh-huh. And uh, she did this as a university-funded project out of University of Scotland. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty amazing that like she's just twenty-two years old and like. You know, she herself, from a Bala Pad perspective, uh-huh. has already reached more than 100,000 women uh, in the oh, last wow. 18 months. And that's just purely Bala Impact, got nothing to do with yeah, us. The impact is here is big, big, big. Yeah, so we're talking orders, big. Yeah. Obviously, the problem yeah. is much, much bigger, yeah. right? So uh, so we have, in the, Swami has taken a very strategic focus to, uh, to make difference and bring that impact, mm-hmm. especially in Delhi. Yeah. And uh, well, she's been in more than 15 to 16 states, but Delhi and Rajasthan holds mm-hmm. close because... Uh, as a matter of fact, statistics suggest otherwise that, like you know, the incidence or uh, the fertility fertility rate of uh, girl children is top in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and like mm-hmm. Chennai and Tamil Nadu and something similar, pretty much as well in Rajasthan. Mm-hmm. But complete opposite dynamic is that uh, the illiteracy for the girl children is also highest in Andhra and Rajasthan and uh, like you know, uh-huh. some Jharkhand and like you know, some of these other places. 
So, uh, and why do you need a cloth-based pad? I mean, like the girls and women in Rajasthan, because of the taboo, they're using rags, which is creating infections. Uh -huh. Or if they use, they have to dispose it through a pad, they have to wait until it's dark in the uh -huh. night and they leave their town. They had yeah. to walk outside mm -hmm. of their uh, village or home to kind of, you know, dig some ground and then yeah. like, you know, hide it. And we're completely trying to change the dynamic and tackle that. And some of the same problems exist. So I think it, it, it looks to be so complex. Then it, uh, it is it, much it's more not a simpler problem. Uh, sitting in the U.S., it's very difficult to comprehend. No, no. So no. I'm glad you're bringing that up because a lot of people have. Uh, I mean, have no idea that uh, this is not. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is not, this is happening. This, right? yeah, this, this is happening. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's uh, we are in uh, 2019, and uh, yep. what we're talking about is something. It, I mean, not a lot of people here might not even be aware of that uh, this is a problem of very such, true, uh, such very nature. True. Yeah. yeah, very true. I'm glad you bring so it up. So that's the party pads. And yeah. uh, much to the same degree, we figured out that the pad that we gave cannot go everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So we have party pads here. We have bala pads in the northern part of India. Mm -hmm. And we take also bala pads to Nepal, where mm -hmm. uh, one of our friends, um, uh, Kanchi, uh, mm -hmm. she just started a Save the Child Nepal mm -hmm. portion of it. And as we speak, uh, she will actually be on top of Mount Everest either today or tomorrow. Oh, okay. So pretty, you, pretty soon you're going to see the post. But this uh -huh. is the third time she has done that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a girl girl doing that like on uh, three times uh, uh -huh. from her Tamang yes. tribe, like, you know, she's the only woman who has done this. But the interesting story about Kanchi is uh, she's been human trafficked uh -huh. 15 years ago, right? And then uh, she, she's trying to raise voice for the girl child uh -huh. against uh, like trafficking and uh -huh. etc. to elevate the, you know, the yeah, what, I mean, what a woman can do, what a party right. can do and etc. right? It brings so, a lot of awareness. Uh, people have not heard of things yeah. that can yeah, bring it to light here. Yeah. Right, That's right, true. exactly. And uh, Everest is no easy thing, but yeah. um, <laughs> I can get into you right now. Mount Everest is ready to kiss her feet in two days. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're just waiting and rooting for our country right now for that. Awesome. And last but not the least, uh, we have two amazing friends from Pakistan. And uh, one is Aliha, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Aliha Nasrullah. And um, she's, she's probably 21, 22. Uh -huh. And uh, she started her own organization called Barkat Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and what she does is she raises awareness here in US, and then uh, she funds the projects and back in Pakistan home to bring a lot more awareness for, especially for women health and infant health and like child mm -hmm. you know, child health and et cetera and all that stuff. So um, I've been inspired tremendously by her, like, you know, mm -hmm. considering she's half my age. Uh -huh. And uh, and we have another friend, Varda. Uh -huh. And uh, and Varda is probably around the same age. These guys are still students, right? Yeah. Um, Aliha is a student from NYU and mm -hmm. she's still doing dental, uh, yeah. like pursuing that. and. Uh, Varda is actually doing a medicine from uh, a university in Lahore, uh -huh. and uh, so it, she started uh, something pretty similar, and it's called Daisy Pad. Uh -huh. So now we figured out that, like you know, the way we can stretch this message is to kind of create an ecosystem mm -hmm. where, uh, like you know, we give putty pads in India for most parts of India where we need it. Even for Kerala, we send fifty thousand pads, like when we know that emergency uh -huh. thing happened. Same thing with like uh, Bala in like Delhi, Rajasthan, and then mm -hmm. uh, Nepal and uh, daisy pads in, in Pakistan and, and then uh, like last yeah. but not the least uh, we also have something called Afri pads. Uh -huh. uh, we do that uh, um, we have the menstrual hygiene day coming up on May 28th uh -huh. and uh, that's when we'll kick off and another thousand women and girls will actually receive Afri pads thanks uh -huh. to Save the Child yeah. and all the donors. Yes. So sanitation is very critical and very important for mm -hmm. us and we we think that is actually an equalizer mm -hmm. education comes after yes and uh, so that's the call i would like to give a shout out to all the organizations uh -huh. which are doing amazing work on education yes, absolutely uh, but please think about the gold child and like you know see how we can partner with save the child and like you know we can mm -hmm. take the message forward mm -hmm. and uh, we can like you know put a yeah, bad I, I like that back. message i'm glad you said that because it's it's a part of education yeah. so we, you cannot educate without the first part so yeah. it's it's really exactly. very important and also, um, you mentioned several countries. So, how many countries is right now you're oh, operating in? Right, right now in four countries. So, mm -hmm. this will be India, Nepal, Pakistan, and uh, Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be in at least another three or four uh, countries in Africa by end of this year. So. Okay, yeah. so that's that's a lot of uh, area you're covering, and right. that that is uh, that's changing things. And I would like also. Uh, your message because the kind of programs you're running yeah. and I heard uh, most of the people are very young yeah. in the program right. who have adopted and who started their own right. movements in their countries. Right. 
So what is your message to the youth out there, especially those who are watching today? And what would you give them a message, especially with whatever you have attended on, on right from the buried beds onwards to the special needs right. and a whole lot of things which you are doing? Right. Um, thanks, Jay, for mm -hmm. really bringing up a very uh -huh. important uh, aspect of like, you know, how change happens in the uh -huh. world, right? So we do have something called the uh, Chain Makers uh, 2030. Uh -huh. There's oh, a program okay. that we actually run. And um, um, there's a lot of stuff that goes around Chain Makers 2030. And the 2030 is actually about United Nations goals mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you know all the 169 countries have come together uh, to kind to of sign and agree yeah. that like mm -hmm. you know, we'll all work together, right? So this program is actually about teaching the kids of like you know trying to understand what are the global problems, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, especially around hunger and uh, water, uh, like education, mm -hmm. uh, most importantly, equality yes. and uh, like poverty and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Try to help them understand like, you know, what's the real problem, right? What are mm -hmm. the targets? Yes. And how do we then programmatically or systematically put a plan together, like mm -hmm. some kind of a strategy to really tackle some of these problems? Yes. And obviously mm -hmm. innovation is required. And uh, because the problems are getting much faster and much quicker, they're growing, uh -huh. uh, that they've, and we're not able to scale so to that, that speed. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for especially the next generation to mm -hmm. kind of uh, start thinking with a change mindset, like, uh -huh. you know, become the change themselves first. Normally that would start from where you're actually yes, helping your dad right. and mom yeah. at home mm -hmm. and uh, you're taking initiative at home and being responsible for your own actions at home and not yes. just waiting and complaining and arguing about things which yeah. uh, which mean which would not mean anything in, in, in another few years to come yeah but uh, but be more vested and yeah. uh, kind of like you know uh, build this empathy mm -hmm. and uh, and practice that empathy with your mom and dad first and yeah. then take it to the rest of the world yeah and once you do that then obviously as part of leadership you'll probably need a big team to make things happen yes. and uh, try to build your teams and you know, yeah. try to build your teams but mm -hmm. uh, be committed to what your passion is all about mm -hmm. And uh, much to what inspiration masters uh, continuously advocates, or yeah. probably advocate the same exact thing. Yeah. It's about passion and it's about purpose. Find your purpose and yeah. uh, never give up on your passion. Yeah. And uh, success is yours. And yeah. I think that's exactly how we we got where we got to. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you know, trying to give away like a million dollars uh, in funds to for various objectives and projects in uh -huh. India or other places. In the last ten years, it's uh -huh. no easy task. Yes, and uh, I don't think it's because it of just one person. Out. Yeah, yeah, one person can have a vision, but yeah. uh, th when it becomes a mission, it's about the team. Yes. So go find your uh, passion and then uh, don't stop. Yeah. So that's what we advocate here to passion and purpose. You see that on the board and that it's always there. Um, also, you have the program where you meet once a week yeah. and and you educate right. the youth. So tell us something, how they can join in, how they can volunteer. Right. Uh, the young people, we have a whole lot of them watching. Right. So how they can join you, where they can find you, and how they can join on your weekly meetings right. to get energized. Right. Because what you say is a message, you start, first you change yourself and then you can change the whole right. simple thing. Right, right. Exactly. So we want to hear that. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, uh, I, got, I think I'm, you bring up a good point and you said like, you, know, you actually used energized. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really critical that like, you know, we kind of keep igniting that mm -hmm. uh, with our children. Yes. And uh, one of the things that uh, I naturally see in a lot of middle school students and especially high school students is mm -hmm. there's a lot of stress in these kids. Yeah. And all That's trying right. to, all no, trying right. to, you know, all trying to go hit, uh, uh, like you know, try to get to the finish line. Yeah. And uh, my my elder brother taught me one this one time that like you know, don't try to run a rat race mm -hmm. because even if you win a rat race, you'll still be a rat. Yeah. That's right? right. So try to be a tiger. Try to be a lion. Or try to be something else. Right. Try to be different. And uh, I I particularly believe that you can be different and you mm -hmm. can make a difference in the world by naturally kind of igniting your mm -hmm. inner leadership skills yes. and like the way you would normally you know kind of uh, bring that to surface yes. is uh, it starts with empathy yes. and uh, once you find empathy and kindness in your heart mm -hmm. 
uh, then I think the world and the path becomes easy, right? Yes. So at this point of time, what we're trying to do as part of Change Makers 2030 program is, so I talk to these kids like uh, for at least three to four hours uh -huh. uh, every other Sunday, mm -hmm. right? And this is an opportunity for me to kind of tell oh. them stories mm -hmm. of, uh, and then actually match these stories uh, to, to the real problems uh -huh. and give them a strategic approach of how they can actually go tackle these problems, right? Yeah. And what we're doing is we're connecting these children in U.S. Yes. to connecting directly over Skype with kids in India and Africa. Uh -huh. So they're exposed to the real children and the real problems, okay. right? And uh, so that's one thing we're trying to do. Very A couple of things yeah. we're trying to caveat that is because they obviously need natural leadership mm -hmm. uh, lessons as well. We kind of uh, connect them with like uh, the top CEOs here uh -huh. who have been really successful for leadership uh -huh. lessons. We connect them with social entrepreneurs. Wow who kind of give them the real stories from what they did and like, you know, how they kind of like, you know, won the battle. Mm -hmm. At the same point of time, I have my friends who are kind of continuously advocate for how do you really solve a farming crisis? How do you become yeah. the change? Yeah. Right. Like, you know, how do you get into organic uh, gardening and organic farming and like, yes. you know, how can that change the dynamic in the world? A lot of our children right now, they don't know how the, the food gets into the plate on the table. Yes, I can get into you right now. Most of them, if you ask the question, the first question they will actually obviously tell you is that it comes from a grocery store uh -huh. and not from a field in Andhra Pradesh or Punjab, uh -huh. right? And so that's the struggle that we have with our own yes. kids. And uh, and this is always my favorite part of the story. Every time I ask a kid, <laughs> can you define hunger? They always tell me that they are hungry. But and I think that is exactly the problem with the parents yeah. here in US. Mm -hmm. We give everything we give everything and we give more than what they really need, uh -huh. right? We're always giving them more than what they need. Yes. And uh, I think because that's... we never a, deprived of anything. Here, right? Exactly. So, we tend to go overboard. We tend to give... Yeah. We do a lot more for our kids. And, uh, and the challenge is if they do not understand and they, not, they cannot understand and explain what hunger is all about, uh -huh. I don't think they will be successful in life. Uh -huh. They need to go through the struggle, so uh -huh. they need to at least understand that. Uh -huh. And I don't think in the current timeline, uh, as parents, uh, uh -huh. with all the busy jobs that we have, uh -huh. and uh, with all the karates and the dances and then <laughs> the tennis classes and everything, I don't think we barely sit with our kids to talk about what India is all about, I think or like, we, you know, we what humanity is all about. We so. hear a lot of Fortnite. <laughs> so. right. yeah, I don't think Fortnite's an avenger, so we'll teach these kids as much as what they would probably should, you know, uh, try to get something <laughs> and, and experience directly from the parents. Yeah. Uh, and I think we so should. I, I think I like that story. idea to take up the 2030, to be, pick up the big challenges. Yeah. And as Ravi mentioned, he's talking about this every other week. Uh, not only the talks, not only the stories, but to actually bring in the CEOs and successful people along with social entrepreneurs to explain that whole process. And a lot of young people watching today, they should take the advantage and opportunity to join right. in. Yeah, that's that's a very good idea. And, and uh, I think let me add idea. like one last sure, sure. remark to that, right? So um, obviously we would recommend something like this, uh -huh. uh, especially for high school students. Uh, for a couple of different reasons, right? Because the topics and uh, the discussions that we are uh -huh. actually having, these are much large scale global problems and yes. they would only be able to comprehend that. Uh -huh. If you're talking about menstruation and pads and stuff, we obviously want the girls to understand that like, uh -huh. you know, they're actually mentally and physically available to understand the challenges yes. with their problems uh -huh. too, right? So the format of the program is we normally ask the, the, the parents to uh, pay a registration fee of $500. Uh -huh. And what we do is we use the $500 to uh, educate a child in India uh -huh. or sponsor a child. Yes. That child is assigned back to the kid here in US. Uh -huh. And they're expected to write letters and uh -huh. they get on a Skype call and they need to talk and build a relationship. Oh, interesting. And, uh, but that it doesn't end there, right? The kids have to volunteer for 100 to 250 hours based on their age group. Uh -huh. And they have to go earn this $500 back and give it to their mom and dad who actually so the dads are only loaning the money that is right they are right. not paying for it it's uh -huh. the kids responsibility to go raise the funds okay and uh, for that normally there is a schedule where they actually have to work this many hours at home oh, okay they could be cleaning I mean like they can come back and clean their own room and ask for donations mm -hmm. they can do that it has to be impactful they have to go out of their way to do this mm -hmm. not because the dad and mom asked for that and etc 
So it has to be coming from the children itself, right? So that's that, and then interesting. So you yeah. get the money, but you have to pay they back. have to earn it and pay it back to the earn it, pay it back, and also you get an opportunity to connect with somebody. Obviously, they can do make a difference stuff. in they their lives. They can write letters and they can meet them. They actually can meet them and they go to India. Yeah. So and in some cases, say if you're from Mumbai and your uh -huh. child is in Dehradun and uh -huh. you can't make it, uh -huh. no big deal. It's not a problem. And uh, what we'll normally tend to do is uh -huh. every time some of my friends go to India. I just find out which city and which town they're going and we'll try to do a party pad distribution or connect them with the local orphanage there. Uh -huh. And uh, so that way they're still exposed and etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it gives them an opportunity to kind of like, you know, step out of their comfort zone and really yes. perceive life as it comes. Yeah. And it's maybe use like, some of yeah. that to it's, kind of it's become leaders. Sometimes so that's an important part along with whatever education they're getting Correct. at school and college. Very true. Okay, this is something which is which is not going to be taught anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. that too. And obviously, they will need these kind of. Uh, um, mm -hmm. I mean, each kid will need a portfolio Absolutely, of their yeah. own to because substantial. To if you want, too. if you want to make some difference, you would have have to have some first hand experience right. in in knowing people. Very true. And going to the to problem. Right. And that will of course uh, train them for handling whatever comes their okay. way. Very true. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's great. And you also have a lot of programs coming up here. Correct. So what is the upcoming event? So the two events that are coming up is uh, we have a, a party 5k run, uh, mm -hmm. which is going to be in Frisco Commons Park, uh -huh. in Frisco, and this is going to be on June 9th. June 9th. June okay. 9th. June 9th. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, the run, we're going to kick it off at 9 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, this is going to be hosted by my one of my good friends, uh, Radha, uh -huh. Radha Sathya, and uh, she's from Kashish. Kashish will be there performing as well. Uh, right. So they'll be really, they're really awesome, amazing entertainers. Right. So, uh, and great singers too. And um, so we'll have that, and uh, you actually and have Radha Sathya is a very good friend of ours, and yeah. she has been on our show here too. Correct, yeah. perfect. <laughs> 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 So, and uh, we'll have a lot of uh, people or a lot of friends there on that day, all running for a unique cause of their, something that is close to their heart. Uh -huh. So this could be education, this could be sanitation, this could be empowerment, this could be pads. Yeah. Uh, this could be sexual and reproductive rights in Africa. Uh -huh. It could be like, you know, uh, special needs children's rights. Mm -hmm. And last but not the least, it will also be against uh, protection against rape. Uh -huh. uh, because we do have Pari rape uh, uh, program here and we kind of, uh, we just adopted 75 of those right. laws. Uh -huh. And uh, well, I think you have a great opportunity to all connect and talk about it and see how you guys can all be participants of so this. So that will be the one of the event. And right, then right. we have one more event coming up. And then the last but not the yeah. least, I'm glad you reminded uh -huh. me of that. So we're doing a 10 year anniversary event on August 31st. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a, a celebratory event. Uh -huh. And uh, obviously we plan to raise some funds as well on that day. Uh -huh. uh, but it's just to talk about our success stories and like, you know, uh, and we're a Frisco-based organization. We have uh, we have we've grown mm -hmm. this big. Uh, uh, we have we do have a volunteer and donor base across the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a majority of that has come from Dallas. So this will be a great opportunity, and I'm going to invite all you guys over. Okay. If you're That's interested, do you want to join? Uh, uh, the easiest August way. August 31st. Frisco. It's August 31st. August 31st. Frisco. Frisco. Yeah. Okay. So the event will actually be in Adalia's uh, Marriott uh, Quorum mm -hmm. in uh, in the gallery area, mm -hmm. and. Um, so the easiest way to connect uh, would be to obviously connect with uh, 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 like you know our friends at Inspiration Masters here, mm -hmm. and then uh, they can obviously write an email to me. I'm Ravi at SaveTheChild.org. But the easiest okay. way to get us is uh, on your Facebook page. On the Facebook page, we are yeah. Save the Child Foundation. Save. Our website is SaveTheChild.org, mm -hmm. and uh, um, yeah. Looking forward to meeting more and like you know obviously bringing this family up. Awesome, to all that's the kids great. Them, so. so again, um, Ravi, we got so much great information from you, and of course the young people watching they got some great information. They can join you and find you. Again, uh, on behalf of the entire team of Inspiration Masters, I heartily thank you thank for you taking so much, the time yeah. and coming here and talking to us. Right. Again, thank you everyone for watching. We got some great information from Ravi here about Save the Child Foundation. And also, do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel at Inspiration Masters uh, so that you never miss an interview like this. Again, this is Jay at Inspiration Masters, the Public Speaking and Leadership Training Institute. And I'm going to see you very soon. Thank you.